Welcome to the Soul Bodied Entrepreneur Podcast. I'm your host, Anna Kinkela. As an entrepreneur, it's easy to get caught up in all the strategies, funnels, mindset hacks, and all the doing. And while strategies are important, success in entrepreneurship ultimately depends on you and how you are being within yourself and in your business. In this space, we explore how to alchemize your internal world and go deeper than mindset. We dive into topics like conscious leadership, embodiment, spirituality, and leading from a place of wholeness and belonging within as you expand into quantum level energetic soul bodiment. Welcome everyone to episode 28 of the Soul Bodied Entrepreneur. This is your host, Anna Kinkela, and today we are going to be diving into the topic of co-creation. This podcast episode is not going to be a one, two, three step formula for co-creating. And I want to also distinguish that while I am referring to manifestation here, I think that co-creation is really different. And I think it's an important distinction in energy. And when I see people talking about manifestation and how they're talking about manifestation, it's a big reason why they're getting stuck and why they're not seeing results manifesting in their external world. And so I really want to approach this conversation from a very different lens and help you to tune into the subtle energy of what it means to be a co-creator, because that is how you start to embody it in your life and in your business. So, you know, yes, this is about seeing external results in your business, but it's also about actually learning how to embody the co-creator energy because it's not just important for the 3D results, but it's also important for how you show up in your business and why co-creation is really not just how you bring in you know, the tangible income results, the clients, all of that, but it's also how you create content It's how you lead your business. It's, you know, how you market in alignment. It's pretty much the whole container of how you are being in your business. Embodying the energy of co-creation in your business means that you are living in the energy of co-creation. So your business and your life and how you approach those things are not separate. They're intertwined. So in order for you to truly embody the energy of co-creation, you have to take it in all realms of your life. It's a lifestyle. It's about trusting and surrendering to the information that you're receiving and then taking big leaps of faith that are in alignment with whatever is being communicated to you. Embodying the co-creative energy means that you are living your entire life through it. It's a lifestyle. So it's not just something that you apply to your business. It's the way that you approach everything in your life. Of course, your business and life is extremely interlinked. You are not your business. However, you are being reflected in your business. And so... I want to encourage you to stop co-creating in just one space, right? What I'm talking about here is stop focusing on your financial goals and on your external manifestations and start focusing on how you are bringing the co-creative energy to everything around you. Are you listening? Are you tuning in? Are you allowing yourself to take action steps that's in alignment with what you hear? Are you going within instead of chasing outside of yourself? And really, this is the main space that I see this energy not being embodied is that you want to achieve X, Y, and Z externally, but when the universe is communicating with you and giving you messages, 
you're either not hearing it and not willing to tune in and there's a lot of avoidance that's happening or there's a lot of resistance and actually taking the action steps that are being told or communicated to you that you need to take in order to get to this next space in your business. Reaching an income goal or receiving something externally in your life is not just dependent on you applying a certain marketing strategy or showing up with certain kinds of content in your business. In the 3D realm, it is, but on a deeper layer, there's an energetic component that's playing underneath the surface that perhaps you don't actually have the energetic container to receive what you really desire until you let go of some identities, until you let go of different energies that are hanging on to you, right? And this can be relationships. This can be the place where you live. This can be a lot of little and big things that are happening in your life inside of you that first need to be transmuted through in order for you to be able to actually hold this new energetic container in your business, whether it's financial or otherwise. One of the most common places that I see people getting stuck with co-creation is that they're creating from their mind. They're creating from their ego. They're creating from this headspace. All of the energy is circulating in the head and there's no feedback loop that's happening. Co-creation is co-creating with your whole being, right? You have to feel it in order to become it right? There has to be alignment with the mind and the body. So if your mind is going somewhere, but your body isn't following with it, that's where there's disharmony happening, right? That's where there's disconnection that's occurring in the energetic field, which is why embodiment is so important for the whole process of co-creation. You have to believe and know that something is truly arriving into your life and business. You have to feel it in your body. And if you don't, if you're not really situated in that energetic space, then it's kind of like you're pushing and forcing your way into a result. So I want you to just ask yourself and look back on the times where you maybe haven't brought in what you really wanted to into your life and business, did you feel complete resonance and embodiment with what it is that you are magnetizing to you? Joe Dispenza actually talks about this a lot. I don't think he names it co-creation per se. I think he talks about it as manifestation, but he talks about you really having to feel the feeling in the heart center. And a lot of what is being taught when it comes to like manifestation and co-creation is that, you know, you set a goal, you write down the goal every single day and like repeat all of these mantras and beliefs over and over again, and that it will manifest into your life. Now, maybe that's worked for some people. I mean, I've heard success stories with that, but one of the things I see most often with my clients is that you cannot just repeat something over and over again and have it become reality. You have to really feel it. So if you're repeating it and you're feeling it, then yes, it's, it's going to work. But if you're not feeling it, then the energy isn't behind it, right? So this is where embodiment really comes into the picture. And this is where it's also actually really important that you are in alignment with what you are desiring. This is so important because we, especially if you're in the online space as a coach, um, in the online space as an entrepreneur, whatever you do, there's a whole community that's really obsessed with you know, 10K months, all these financial goals, having a certain kind of lifestyle. And all of that is beautiful and wonderful if it is truly in alignment with your core desires for you as an individual human being. However, 
a lot of people get seduced by you know, what everyone else has. And then they kind of co-opt that vision for their own life without actually doing the deeper work of understanding what their true desires are. And this is where I also find a lot of misalignment happening for entrepreneurs is that they're just trying to try on someone else's life and they think they want what that person has. And when they get there, they actually feel extremely dissatisfied and disconnected because it's not really reflective of who they really are. And so one of the first things I really want to encourage you to do is to truly tap into your own core desires and really ask yourself, is this what I want? Or is this a projection of what I think I should want? And I cannot tell you how many times this has happened to me, not just when I've owned my business, but in you know, my earlier life when I graduated college and, you know, went into a master's program, like I was doing all of these things because I thought I wanted it because that was what the expectation was in society was to have all these things, to have all these degrees, to have a career, to have a marriage, to have kids, all this stuff. But through my own journey, I really found that even though I had once pursued those things and thought that they were my desires, they really weren't my core desires. They didn't get to the heart of what Anna, the unique soul, the unique energy within me truly, truly wanted in my depths. So I want to encourage you to look past societal expectations, past familial expectations, past surface level desires, and really dive in deep to your core, core desires, and then create your goals from that space, right? How do you desire to feel? This is very like Danielle Laporte. If you know of her, um, you can check her out. If you don't, she, she wrote a whole book, has an entire movement essentially around connecting with your core desires from your feeling state and then creating goals from that place. That's what I'm talking about here. The deeper work though here is really unraveling the conditioning that's, that's present for everyone, um, of what you've been taught to desire of what you've been taught to want and really ask your heart if this is what would create contentment for you. Would having a fancy car create contentment for you? And for some people that the answer is going to be yes, like that fulfills some kind of core desire for them for like luxury or, you know, they really like the artistry of fancy cars or whatever it is. But for other people, it's more of a status symbol. And that's more about the external reflection from other people rather than how you are feeling about yourself. Right. And those are very different things. Um, And this really is important for co-creation because your soul, the guidance that you're receiving from your soul is reflecting your own unique energetic blueprint. It's giving you messaging that's in alignment with your own unique energy. So if you're trying to throw out goals and achieve things that really aren't in alignment with that, you are, you might have some trouble receiving it. You might get to it right through like hustle or like working really hard or doing all the things. Right. But in terms of like truly flowing, dancing, co-creating, making it easy, um, that's where a lot of resistance comes up in the space. Co-creation isn't something that you force. Co-creation is something that you surrender into. There has to be so much trust. There's an energy of free falling and letting go of the things that have kept you safe in order to truly enter into that space of co-creation, into that dance with the universe. And when I say letting go of things that have felt safe, I mean things that have felt safe but are no longer in alignment with where you are going, right? As human beings, we all need some level of safety. That's to be expected. But it's about letting go of the identities that you've created for yourself to actually separate you in some way. And at some point we are ready to let go of those identities. We're ready to shed them so we can step into a new one. That's more supportive of our highest self and our highest vision and purpose in this life. And because of this, one of the most powerful things that you can do to become a 
co-creator of your life and business is to really peel back your conditioned layers and get down to the core truth of who you are. This is why embodiment work is so important, right? Because when you are in the power of your truth and the power of yourself and the power of that unique soul that you are, you co-create with so much more ease and so much more flow, right? Because you are acting, behaving, being from your essence rather than from your conditioning. You're not forcing, you're not pushing, you are surrendering, trusting, being who you really are and showing up unapologetically in that space. So when it comes to business investments, one of the best business investments that you can make in yourself is to do this deeper unraveling work within you. The best thing you can do is reveal more about yourself and who you really are and learn how to show up in that energy because you will create with so much ease and with so much joy and true alignment. Like this is what this is really about, right? It's it's not even about the external manifestations of what you want, even though that's like an amazing part of it because you know, that's what creates a lot of contentment for us in the human realm. But it's about like feeling good in yourself, feeling joyful, feeling like business isn't hard, like your life isn't hard all the time. Certainly there are hard things in life, right? This doesn't mean that because you're co-creating that you're not going to feel hard feelings or have hard moments in your life. You will, but you will know how to transmute through them with so much more ease right? So that's the difference. It's not that you won't have pain. It's that you're going to know how to hold the pain and work with the pain in such a different way when you're co-creating. And when you're in co-creation, there is this real recognition of your own power. A lot of what we do as human beings is we get into this space of disempowerment, like seeing all the obstacles in front of us or seeing why something won't work or why this, you know, isn't going to be successful, why we're not going to be successful, right? And when we learn to switch back into the seat of the creator more quickly, because inevitably we're going to get into that space, right? We're going to get into the space of doubting and and wondering if it's going to work and all of that stuff. But when we learn how to shift into the, the seat of the creator, we are able to really reclaim our own power over our own life and over what happens and how it happens and, you know, what's around us. And this isn't to say that there are things that you can't control, right? Because inevitably there are, it's life, right? And those things that you can't control are there to help you grow. But it is to say that instead of seeing, you know, that thing that happened to you in your life as something that's insurmountable, you instead are able to see the lesson from it and you're able to empower yourself to create something different and energetically transmute that into something that fuels you instead of something that blocks you, right? And so co-creation to me for this reason is so much deeper than manifesting things into our physical reality. That's a component of it, but it's more about you really stepping into the energy of the enchantress. And I love to use archetypes when talking about different energies, because I think it can capture exactly what I'm speaking about here. If you visualize an enchantress, what do you notice about her? Like what makes her energy? The enchantress is someone who you know, creates magic all around her. She can really control, seduce the environment and make it what she wants it to be. And so I encourage you to invite this archetype into your experience. Meditate with the enchantress and see what arises for you. Like really notice the felt sense of being the enchantress of your business, being the enchantress of your life. How would that feel different than how your life or business is feeling right now? 
What's the felt experience there? Visualizing and tuning into different energetic archetypes can really help you to shift into that energy in your own field and help you to recalibrate and repattern what is going on energetically right now in your space. So really inviting you into exploring that more deeply. Even though this is implied when I say co-creation and when I say dance with the universe and creating a feedback loop, I just want to clarify it in case that languaging doesn't resonate for you or if it's just not clear. So when I say creating a feedback loop, I mean opening up your channel to receive information. So um, this can happen through meditation. This can happen through embodied movement. And I do both um, because that's how you really move the energy, right? So you're opening up your crown and really convening and entering into a relationship with the divine in meditation. And then with the embodied movement, what you're doing is you're allowing energy to circulate in your body. You're engaging the lower chakras in your body. And so you're not only like rooting into yourself more through the first three chakras, but then you're also really opening up to divine knowing through the upper chakras with meditation. Um, and this is what I really consider um, the two core components of being an embodiment is that you're moving this energy, you're accessing this divine knowing, um, and you're opening up that channel to receive information. And the key here is, is that you know how to listen, right? You know how to hear the information. You're in tune with the intuitive ways that you receive info and that you trust and take action on the information, which in and of itself sometimes requires a lot of energetic work with your parts, with some of those ego parts that come in and try to really block you um, from doing things that are aligned because they're often really scary. Sometimes the things that the universe tells you you need to do are really big leaps of faith that you as a human have to take. And so your embodiment of the enchantress is really about you learning how to trust and surrender at an even higher level. And if you're in true co-creative energy as a lifestyle, you are continually trusting and surrendering. You're continually letting go of the things that are sometimes the hardest to let go of so that you can be in true energetic resonance with your soul and with the universe. And this type of lifestyle isn't for everyone, right? Like this requires you being deeply in tune with yourself. It requires you being really honest and it requires a lot of shedding and releasing and really being able to let go of things that are not in alignment with you. And so even though this is, isn't for everyone, I do think that there's this complete and beautiful space of bliss that gets to emerge when you really learn how to like surf on this energy. And you also really learn how to hold yourself at this deep, deep level and really learn how to be the alchemist of your experience, not spiritually bypassing anything, just simply really learning how to work with each energetic space within you. And it's so empowering. It's so beautiful. And you get stretched in all of these amazing ways. And you just get to witness yourself becoming more truer to who you really are underneath all those layers of conditioning. I love it. It's something that has completely transformed the way that I do life, the way that I do business. And it's brought a lot of challenges, but challenges that I've grown through and a life of really adventure and not knowing the plan, really creating my life as I receive the guidance. There's such a place of liberation and freedom there. So if one of your core desired feelings is freedom, then this is the lifestyle for you. And it's really the lifestyle that makes your biggest dreams a reality.
right, in the 3D realm. And I'm using a lot of stereotypical language here, which typically annoys me a lot, but at the same time, it is really true. Um, it's not that your life is perfect by any means. It's that you are living from your truth. You're living from what gives you joy and contentment. You're not in the rat race. You're simply being who you really are and living the kind of life and leading the kind of business that makes you feel good and makes you money, right? And I see a huge disconnect for entrepreneurs. There's a lot of entrepreneurs who are maybe making a ton of money, but have very little life satisfaction, right? And there's some entrepreneurs who maybe aren't making a lot of money, but they have a ton of life satisfaction. And I think that there is a place where those two things meet. And what gets you there is being in the energy of co-creation. So this isn't about creating a picture perfect life. This is about creating a life that you feel good in where you have enough all the time, whatever enough means for you and where you can really end this cycle of comparison and truly own your own energy, own your own desires and stop looking at other people who have things that you don't have, but that you probably don't even want. I mean, maybe you do, but do you really, <laughs> right? So it's, it's a beautiful, it's for me, it's like the only really way that I want to live. Um, because it means me living in my truth. It means me living from a place of power within myself and it means me having this like deeply intimate relationship with the universe, um, which is something that I find very satisfying and that evokes a lot of joy for myself. Because when I'm connected to all of the energies around me, I can see the way that we're all moving together. I can see the synchronicity. I can see the magic in it. And above all things, life is magical. Life has so much possibility, infinite possibility for all of us. And getting to a place of contentment in all areas of our life is tapping into that magic. And that really also happens through the energy of co-creation. It's also interconnected with, with everything that I teach. Um, and it's so much more deep than any income goal or anything that you want externally, even though that's that's part of the package too. So um, what I want to leave you with is some suggestions on how you can co-create from the energy of your desire and open up your channel to receive codes and downloads that are related to this core desire that you want to embody for yourself. So first, I want you to sit down and you can even close your eyes and just allow yourself to really come into a place of stillness in your heart. And I want you to ask your heart, what is it that I really, really desire for myself in my business and in my life? What is my core desire? What do I want to feel? And allow for just one desire to rise to the surface. And let's just say that that desire is freedom. I want you to allow yourself to sit with the word freedom in your heart and breathe it into your heart. And just really notice what it feels like to have the energy of freedom in your body. Notice the sensation of that in your body. And then I invite you to go into a deeper state of meditation here. You can maybe put some binaural beats on and allow yourself to go into the quantum realm as you're meditating. So the quantum realm is the field of infinite possibilities, right? It's the place where 
you are disconnected from all of your ego identities and where you can really create from a place of true possibility. It's where it's where the soul resides, right? And so as you go deeper in your meditation, deeper into the quantum realm, I often picture myself actually floating in space. And then I start to actually feel space around my body. That's how I know I'm in the quantum realm. And then from this space, really breathe into the heart and ask for guidance from the universe on freedom, on receiving energetic codes for freedom, on seeing what awaits you when you embody freedom in your life and business. And then open the door in the quantum realm into a future self timeline. And notice what you find there. Notice what you see. Notice what's appearing. Are there images? Right? What are you what are you seeing in this future timeline when you open the door? You might also receive some kind of energetic codes in the quantum realm. There's really no um, there's no boundary on what can happen there. It's about really allowing yourself to just open to whatever experience is waiting for you in that space. And then once you feel like you're at a space of completion with that, then allow yourself to come back and journal about your experience. Note any images that came forward, any sensations in your body, any information that you received in general in terms of action steps or moves that you need to take. And then in your day-to-day, I want you to ask yourself, how can I embody this feeling of freedom within myself? How can I align my action steps with this energy, right? What does this woman that is embodying her freedom that is living from a place of freedom. What does she do? How does she act? And take those action steps. Invite a movement practice that evokes the sensation of freedom. As you move, really draw in the energy of freedom into your body and allow it to rest in your physical space. For me, um, running is a way that I feel a sense of freedom. And so when I run, I am embodying freedom in my body and it feels amazing. The more that you can tap into this energy in your everyday, the more that you are going to continue to reinforce this energy landing in your energetic plane and the more you're naturally going to take action steps that are in alignment with that energy. You're going to be receiving more intuitive downloads about how you can create more freedom and feel more freedom. And it's going to start unfolding in front of you. So this is what I'm inviting you into. And it doesn't have to be freedom. Obviously, you can pick any desire and just kind of notice what the process is like. Take notes, journal about it, do it for a week at least. Tap into the quantum realm on a regular basis and and see what energetic codes get transferred to you there. And let me know. You can feel free to message me on Instagram or send me an email. I'd love to hear from you and just see how the experience was. Thank you so much for tuning into today's episode. If you found this episode valuable and insightful, I'd really love to invite you to write a review for us on iTunes, a written review. It really helps for other folks to find us and to see the value of tuning in. Thank you so much for being here. Thank you for your presence. Sending you all love and I'll see you next time.